G'day, here's a curious question. I've drawn here a set of people. I've also drawn here a set of dogs. Now, without ever saying or even thinking the number three, how can I show that this set of people is the same size as this set of dogs? The same number of elements here as there are there. Now, the math word for that would be, can we show that they're equinumerous? Okay, so the challenge is to show these two sets are equinumerous, have the same number of elements, without ever saying or even thinking three. And the way to do that was maybe to draw leashes between the people and the, and the dogs. For example, I could draw a leash between this person and that dog. And I could draw a leash between this person and that dog over there, maybe. And draw a leash here from this person to that dog in the middle. Great. Now, every person is leashed to dog. And backwards, no dogs left out, every dog is leashed to person. And that picture shows me that those two sets are equinumerous. Great. This leashing pattern proves that these two sets are the same size. Now, this idea is lovely. It was actually an idea of Georg Cantor, a German mathematician from the 1800s. And he actually used this leashing idea to explore infinite sets and ask the questions, when are infinite sets the same size? So, let's play with infinity today and have some fun. OK, let's now play with an infinite number of people and an infinite number of dogs. Because my drawing is so bad, I'm going to represent each person as a dot and each dog as a dot as well. So here's an infinite line of people and there's an infinite line of dogs. And I can show those two sets are equinumerous by drawing leashes. In fact, I'll do the very obvious leashing pattern right now. I'll connect this dot of person to that dot of a dog, uh, connect the second person with the second dog, third person with the third dog, and so on. And actually, I can see that these two sets are equinumerous. Now, I'm playing a bit of a mental mind game here, because I wrote an ellipsis here means keep on going. And an ellipsis here means keep on going. I didn't actually draw all the dogs. I didn't actually draw all the people. And I'm not actually drawing all the leashes. So I'll do dot, dot, dot there for keep drawing all the leashes. But in our minds, we can see that every single person will be leashed to a dog, and no dogs will be left out. Every single dog will be leashed to a person. So in my mind's eye, I can see that would be a valid leashing pattern. And this infinite, infinite number of people matches this infinite number of dogs. OK, that's not very exciting. Yes, those two sets are equinumerous. That feels obvious and right. But now, let's get quirky. But I have to clean the board. OK, now I've got two different infinite sets here. I've got the same infinite line of people going off to infinity to the right. But let's play with a double-ended infinity of dogs. Infinitely many dogs going off to the right and infinitely many dogs going off to the left. So there's a double-ended infinity. So is this single-ended infinity equinumerous with this double-ended infinity? This looks bigger to me. So the question is, can we do a leashing pattern? Can we leash every person to a dog and have every dog leashed to a person? And you might say, well, we could just do sort of this thing. Start with the first person, leash it here, maybe. Leash here, leash here, leash here, leash here. If I kept doing that, I'll never get to those dogs on the left. All right, so we've got to be cleverer than that. So here's a clever leashing, le leashing pattern for this single-ended infinity with that double-ended one. I'm going to leash the first person to a dog, maybe that one. I'll leash the second person to a next dog here. But rather than keep going off to the right, I'll now go start going off to the left a little bit. Great. All right. Now I'll go, instead of going back to the left, I'll now switch going off to the right. I'll leash this person to this dog. Now I'll sort of bounce back to the left again and leash this person to this dog. Whoa. Now I'll go back and leash this person to this dog and this person to this dog. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm doing a very consistent pattern, bouncing back and forth. And this way, you can see every person will be leashed to a dog. And eventually, every dog will be leashed to some person. Whoa, whoa. So actually, these two infinities are equinumerous. They're the same size. I've got a leashing pattern that works. They're the same size infinity. OK, well, let's make it worse. OK, here's my infinite set of people again. A single line going up to infinity to the right. But now I'm going to do a double row of dogs. Two lines, single end infinities of dogs. Whoa, so there's double infinity. Surely that's bigger than that set. All right. But here's the thing. I bet I can still create a leashing pattern that leashes every person to a dog and doesn't leave a dog out. Here goes. I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to leash this person, the first person to that dog there. Now, rather than just keep going off along this top line, I'm never going to get to the second line. So I'm going to go to the second line right away. There it is. I'll leash that person to that dog there. Now I'll leash this person to the second dot on that first row and the next person to the second dot on the second row. And I can keep doing this leashing pattern. And I can see as I keep doing this, Every person is indeed going to be leashed to a dog, and every dog is going to be leashed to a person. Great! There's a pattern that shows me actually this single infinity is just as infinite as this double infinity. Whoa, whoa. Now, as I keep playing this game, you can see the patterns here, the, the, my picture's going to get very messy. 
Another approach is to actually, let's label the people one, two, three, four, five, and all the counting numbers. All right, and I'm also going to label the dogs with the counting numbers, give you the same la labels where the leashes are. I'll label this one one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on, nine, 10, 11, 12, there we go. Great, because now I've got the labels, the labels tell me where the leashes are. Two people with the same label, one, a leash. I'm uh, sorry, a person and a dog with the same label, a leash. A dog and a person with the same label, a leash. A dog and a person with the same label, a leash. So actually, just listing out the counting numbers is very helpful here, and it shows where the leashes go, and it'll be less messy than what I'm doing right now. All right, so single letter infinity is actually just as infinite as double infinity. So let's make it worse. Okay, now we're getting truly crazy. Here again is my infinite line of people going off to the right infinitely far, but I've labeled them with the counting numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. In fact, mathematicians call any type of infinity where you can actually label the elements with the counting numbers like this a countable infinity. There's an uncountable infinity number of people, matches the counting numbers. And now I'm being crazy with the dogs. I've got one infinite row of dogs, a second infinite row of dogs, third infinite row of dogs, but I've got infinitely many rows of infinitely many dogs. The rows keep going down, dogs keep going to the right, dogs take this whole two-dimensional space. So there's like a two-dimensional infinity of dogs, and I'm trying to compare it to a one-dimensional one infinity of persons. Whoa! There seems to be no way I could match each person with a dog here and not miss any dogs. This, this definitely feels bigger to me than that. But here's the amazing thing about Cantor's brilliance. He found a leashing pattern that shows that this infinity here is just as infinite as that one and vice versa. There's no difference between these two infinities. There is a leashing pattern that works. And it's a very famous result of his, who's very clever, who's brilliant thinking. It's called Cantor's first diagonal argument. He said, look at the diagonal. So I'll just draw some diagonal lines here and use that to describe a leashing pattern. All right, so we can keep going down. We'll set my pens a little bit weak. Do, 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 do. So follow the diagonals. Leash the first person, number one, with that dog there. Then leash the second person, two, with this dog, three, with that dog. Four, five, and six, leash them on the next diagonal. Seven, eight, nine, ten, seven, eight, nine, ten, leash those people with those dogs, and so on and so on. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and keep going. So actually, you can now see every person is definitely going to be leashed with a dog, and just one dog, and no dog is going to be missed. Every dog is actually going to be leashed to a person. And if you wanted to ask me, you know, to which, where is the millionth uh, person, uh, to which dog is the millionth person leashed to, I could actually mathematically work this out and figure out where the millionth dog is in this arrangement. But the fact that this arrangement exists is amazing because it shows this two-dimensional infinity is really no more infinite than the one-dimensional infinity. Now my intuition is going out the window, things are getting wacky and fabulously exciting. So, let's make it worse. Okay. Here is the full two-dimensional array of dogs. Dogs infinitely off far to the right. Dogs infinitely far off to the left. Infinitely far upwards, infinitely far downwards and all the diagonals across the entire, the entire two-dimensional plane. Nothing but dogs. Now, is this just as infinite as that? My feeling is everything seems to be the same type of infinity. Maybe yes, maybe there's a leashing pattern that works. So pause the video here right now. If you want to try to find a leashing pattern that works for this two, truly two-dimensional array of dogs, go for it. So I'm about to give the answer away myself. Okay, here it goes. The way I thought about doing this is to follow a spiral pattern this time. Leash the first person, say this dog there, and I'm going to spiral around that. Uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and so on. I can see I can actually number the dogs this way which then tells me a leashing pattern. Leash those two, leash those two, leash those two, leash those two, and so on. And again, I could, could write a mathematical formula for that if you want me to have a formula. So to which dog is the nth person leashed? I bet I could tell you, just give me time. But I know every dog is going to be leashed to a person, and every person is going to be leashed to a dog. There's a perfect matching here. This infinity is just as infinite as that infinity, and vice versa. Whoa! So now it's looking like all infinities are the same. They're all this countable infinity. I can put them in a list of the first, second, third, fourth, and go on forever. So Cantor, of course, is wondering, well, is there another type of infinity? Are all infinities maybe just the same? And then, after many decades of thinking, he found another set 
that's not countable. You can't associate them with the counting numbers. You can't put them in a list, first, second, third, fourth. It's bigger than that. So my question to you is, do you want to see Cantor's example of affinity that's even bigger than this? So the answer has to be yes. Okay, so Georg Cantor did actually manage to find another set that's actually more infinite than all the sets we've been looking at so far. It's bigger than countable infinity. Now, it's a bit of a strange example, so let's go through it slowly. But he said, consider the set of all sequences of black and white dots. Actually, this is not quite what he did. I've done this, I'm doing a simpler version of it, but I'll explain what he did in a moment too. All right, so, so here, this is the set of all sequences of black and white dots. So one element of the set would be a sequence of black and white dots. Maybe I'll do nothing but white dots. And what I mean by a sequence of a bunch of dots going off uh, to the right, infinitely far. All right, nothing but white dots would be one element of a set. A second one might be, might, one might be nothing but black dots. That'd be fine, you could do that. All right, all these black dots. Of course, I'm drawing these things in green pen, and who knows what black and white means in the pictures I'm actually drawing, but we're okay, we're okay. Uh, maybe you have a sequence that alternates. Here's a third element of the set. All right, so I'm, I could try to you know, write out all the possible sequences we could be thinking about. Uh, these are kind of systematic. I could actually do something less, less systematic, maybe ones that have black dots in the prime positions. Uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and so on. Or maybe one that's just random, I don't know. Black, black, white, black, white, 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 black, black, white, black, I'm just making it up. So you have random sequences. All right, so here's the set of all possible sequences. Uh, he, says, he says, consider the set of all possible sequences like this. I'm going to draw five of them so far, we can keep going. Then Cantor said, do you know what? This set is bigger than countable infinity. You cannot actually associate the natural numbers, the counting numbers, one, two, three, four, five, and get all the numbers in this list. You're always going to be missing something. All right, so let me explain what I meant by that. I mean, it looks like I've drawn five things here. I've drawn a first example, a second example, a third example, a fourth example, a fifth example, and so on, and so on, and so on. So if this set were countable, that means I could actually keep going on this list and actually get each and every possible sequence. All right, all right. So there's something logically wrong with what I just claimed to be true. And Cantor said, no, no, no. No list of these elements, whatever you try to make, will ever be complete. You'll always be missing something. It cannot be listed out like this. And here's how he did it. And this is called Cantor's second diagonal argument because it's brilliant and clever and involves a diagonal. He says, okay, you think you've got a list of all the possible sequences you could possibly have like this. Then just circle the diagonal of the sequence you have so far. All right, do, 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 and keep going down. Look at that. And use that diagonal to guide you to create another sequence of black and white dots. For example, this first dot is white. He says, change it, make it black. The second dot is black. He says, change it, make it white. This third dot is white, change it, make it black. White, change it. White, change it. And so on and so on and so on. Go all the way down and just change the colors of all the dots you see in the diagonal. And that gives you a new sequence of black and white dots. And then ask, okay, you've created a new sequence. You think you have all the possible sequences in your list. So ask, where is that sequence in your list? Well, it's not the first sequence in your list because you actually made sure the first dots were different. It's not the first sequence. It's not the second sequence in your list because you made sure the second dots are different. Okay, they don't, not going to match up. It's not the third uh, sequence in your list because the third dots are different. It's not the fourth sequence in your list because the fourth dots are different, nor is the fifth, nor is the tenth, tenth element in the sequence because the dots are going to be different. It won't be the millionth uh, um, element in your sequence because the millionth dots are different. This sequence appears nowhere in your list. You thought you had a complete list of all the sequences of black and white dots? Uh-uh, you're missing one. And you might say, well, okay, okay, no worries. I'll take the sequence and put it into my list. Maybe I'll put it right after five and bump everything down one. There, now I've got a complete list because I just happened to miss this one. And Candy will say, okay, now you've got a new, new list here that you think is complete. Do this diagonal argument again, and you'll find yourself another example of something you missed. There is no way that this set of all these sequences can be put in a list. There's no way to match them up with the counting numbers. There's no way for this set to be countable. This set has to be actually fundamentally bigger than countable infinity. So yes, there's another type of infinity out there. Here's an example of it. Whoa, whoa. Um, let me share with you what Cantor was actually thinking here, and it helps give a bit of intuition about what this set actually is. 
Um, the way to think about it is actually draw a number line. In fact, I'll just draw a section of the number line. I'll draw the section between 0 and 1. All right. And we've definitely got numbers, so you know, point 0.1 half, and we've got the point 0.1 quarter, and so on, and 3 quarters. We can keep adding all the points. We can identify all the points on that number line. But actually, let's write those points in binary, base 2, not base 10. I mean, I know 1 quarter is normally 0.25, and 1 half is normally 0.5. But in binary, 1 half is actually 0.1. 0.1. And just to be really clear, I'm going to keep drawing all the extra zeros that most people don't ever bother drawing. If you've got infinitely many zeros, people don't bother writing them. But I can think of one half as 0 0.10000, which looks like a sequence of black and white dots. Black, white, 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 if you like. OK, so every point that looks like corresponds to a sequence of black and white dots. A quarter in binary is 0 0.01, but add those, all those trailing zeros, and I can see it's the sequence white, black, white, 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 white. Uh, three quarters is what going to be 0.11, so 0.11 with all the trailing zeros. There we go. Zero. That's actually point, well, let's add all the trailing zeros, and it's actually this first sequence on my list, 0 0.00000, white, 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 white. Uh, this one's interesting, 0 0.11111. That's actually this number one here, 0 0.11111. So what's going on there? We realize in base 10 that 0.9999 forever equals 10. The base 2 version of that is that 0.111 forever is actually 1. So the number 1 is actually this element right here. And that then illustrates a bit of confusion because you can actually rewrite this one, if you like, any one like this with trailing zeros as a number with trailing 1s instead. Because it actually could be written as 0 0.0011111 forever. Because all those 1s will bump me up to this one here, give me a quarter. So actually, there's a little bit of confusion here. And Cantor was very aware that the points on the number line don't quite match sequences of black and white dots because of this confusion right here. And he had to work to actually get around that confusion. And he did. He says he figured a way to think his way through it and actually show, despite this little hiccup, these points here on the, on the interval between 0 and 1 are actually matching a set that's way more infinite than just countable infinity. So this set here matches all the points on the number line, on a, unit, a, a line of unit length, which then makes me wonder, well, OK, if all the points on a line of length 1 have some type of infinity, what if I did a bigger line, say a line of length 2? Is that a bigger type of infinity still? Oh my gosh, my brain can't help asking questions. OK, here goes. So I'll draw a line of length 1. I'll draw a line of length 2. OK, not very good pictures. But here's the thing. You can actually create a beautiful leashing pattern between all the points on the short line to all those points on the long line. Here's how you do it. I'm going to leash the left point here to the left point, uh, right, left point there. Great. But I'll be a little bit sneaky, and I'll just keep drawing that line upwards for a bit. I'll leash the right point of the short line with the right point on the long line. And I'll draw the leash. There it is. But let me draw up to actually now find sort of an apex point up here, which is going to be my guide for creating the rest of the leashes. For example, I can now see if I want to leash this point on the short line to something on the bottom, just draw the line from that apex and let that define a leash for you. We'll leash it to that point there. And we can go backwards. If I want to leash this point here with some point on the short line segment, just use that apex as a guide, and you can then see which point to leash it to there. Now I can see that every point on the short line is being leashed to a point on the, on the long line, and vice versa, every, line, every point on the long line is leashed to a point on the short line. These two sets, all the points on a short line segment, is just as infinite as all the points on a long line segment. These sets are equinumerous. Whoa, whoa. This is crazy, crazy fun. So we have now at least two types of infinity. Countable infinity, like the counting numbers, and this like continuum of points on a line segment. That's called the, um, what's it called? It's called the continuum. That's that type of infinity there. All right. So that then begs the question, are there even more types of infinity? If so, can we find them? If not, why not? How do we know? But that sounds like a, a topic for another video, because that's a lot today. My brain's actually very tired right now. This is brain hurty, and it's fabulous fun. Oh, but I can't wait for video number two. This is going to be grand.